Onothera speciosa rosea, Mexican evening primrose, and it is a uh, very showy perennial. Uh, you're seeing it here in April, May of 2015. Um, there's a nice close-up of the flowers. So very striking plant. This is funny. It's one of the fir first plants I ever bought from my first home, and uh, it was so showy. I did a impulse buy, which I've done many times since. Here you see it blowing in the wind. And I also want you to notice uh, how it's all spread out. That's a very important point with this plant. So you can probably tell where I'm leading with this. This thing self sows like crazy. These are little seedlings all over this front yard. See that? So the original clump was there under the tree, I presume. And then over probably two or three years, this thing is self-sown all over. Happened to me, I haven't used this plant in 20 years because of this. Um, can't control it in our area. We're in Northern California in a hot inland valley, Pleasanton, California. This is in Danville, and this is how this thing behaves. So I find it so invasive and so hard to control. I'm just unwilling to use it as a designer, as beautiful as it is. So let me tell you about the plant. It flowers in spring and will um, bloom. It does a very heavy bloom in spring, as you can see here, but then it um, starts to uh, taper off in terms of intensity, but will still bloom through a good part of the summer, depending on the situation. So then what I find is the plant looks a little more scraggly. It's not as in, there aren't so many blossoms and then it will start to dry out in our area and um, look pretty ratty. And, the pr and then the plant will stay alive, but it will look like it's being deprived of what it needs to be happy. Even when I had enough water on it, it behaved that way. And I think it, it, it almost behaves like it's an annual where, you know, it goes through this cycle. It, it wants to bloom and it wants to produce seeds. And then once it's done that, it really starts to taper off the bloom. At least this is my experience with it. Um, and then when it came back the next year, because it is a perennial, it was interesting that it spread by slight un underground runners. When I started trying to get rid of it, I found all of these little runners underground. And so it was not just spreading by the seeds dropping, but also by little runners and kind of colonizing a space. So. That's the bad news. As beautiful as this plant is, this is not one I recommend, and I want you to be very clear about what you're in for if you decide you want to put it in for a nice splash of color. Um, you know, the reason I do these videos is to help people be educated on plants, and sometimes that's what you should avoid as much as what you should move towards. And in this plant, um, I think it's a pest, honestly. It's very invasive. And it's not, as a designer, anything I use or anything like that because it's more of a liability than it is for how nice it is in the garden. So if you've got a naturalized area, uh, let's, I guess, put this in context. If you've got a space where there's a lot of room and this spreading out would be a beneficial thing or it, it, it at the very least wouldn't bother you, then I'd say that's where you use it. Um, by the way, it does like full sun. It can tolerate most soils. It's um, hardy down to minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit approximately and um, is very drought tolerant. So it's uh, native apparently to southern United States and uh, northern Mexico. So that's what I can tell you about um, Onothera speciosa rosea, Mexican evening primrose, Beautiful plant, but uh, can definitely become a pest and it's easy to lose control of. Enjoy.